Jeremiah chapter 37 and we're coming to the end of Jerusalem and they have not been listening Jeremiah has been preaching the ears have been closed and King Zedekiah the son of Josiah reigned instead of Kaniah God took this, God took this, the J-E off that name. Now we talked about the originals last week. Man is not to add or subtract to the word of God. God can do it. And God took that man, Jeconiah, and just, the J-E means Jehovah. That guy got so wicked, God's like, I don't even want to be referenced to that man. And we saw yesterday, L. Nathan, the J Jehovah put to Nathan's name, and we saw uh, the virgin birth. Now I can imagine, I, like I said, I don't check, I only can think. I can only imagine there's a modern Bible out there that has Jeconiah. That's not what God has. Stick to the King James. The son of Jehoiakim whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. So this is the, the standard of Judah. Judah is not in authority. Nebuchadnezzar comes in and he takes down one king and Nebuchadnezzar sets up another king. Zedekiah is in office by Nebuchadnezzar. But neither he, Zedekiah, or his servants, nor the people of the land, Judah, did hearken unto the words of the Lord, which he spanked by the prophet Jeremiah. We, that, that's the condition of the church today. They're not adhering to the word of God. We won't allow everybody in our churches. We want to do Easter. We want to do Christmas. We want to do whatever, but when, what the Bible says to do, we don't want to do. We run to Matthew with a great commission because Matthew does not say go preach the word of God. Mark says preach the word. Matthew is a Jewish book. Zedekiah the king sent Jehelico, the son of Shemaliah, and Zephaniah, the son of Masaiah, the priest, Remember, Jeremiah is a priest. To the prophet Jeremiah saying, Pray now to the Lord our God for us. <laughs> you mean after 37 chapters? God, through the Holy Spirit, already told us, verse 2, they're not listening to the words of God. And that would be the state today in America. Oh, you know, all the churches, let's pray, you know, we can get rid of COVID-19. And pray all the, 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 the shots and everything will work. It will be nice and healthy and everything be great without believing and wondering in God. We want God to heal us, but we don't want the preaching. We don't want the Bible. We don't want Jesus Christ. And if God were to heal this nation, evolution would stay in the public school system. And I just read today, uh, a judge is in serious trouble. Because he won't take down the Ten Commandment plaque he has in the courtroom or his office. And you're going to turn around and say, God bless America. One nation under God. And they won't allow the Ten Commandments in a courtroom. That's what they're saying here. Jenica, go tell Jeremiah to pray for us. Haven't we already been told in Jeremiah, God's got the mind, don't pray for them? You know, there was a couple times that that Pharaoh of Exodus, well, you know, pray to God for me. He didn't mean it. And as soon as, as soon as Moses besought the Lord and that plague was gone, and, and he hardened his heart. What they want is they want peace without God. 
Now Jeremiah came in and went out among the people, for they had not put him into prison. Then Pharaoh's army was come forth out of Egypt. And when the Chaldeans that besieged Jerusalem heard the tidings of them, they departed from Jerusalem. So, Judah is looking for Egypt for help. That's another break in the law. God did not want the Jews going and relying on Egypt. Now, Nebuchadnezzar comes three times. 606 B.C. he came. That's probably when Daniel. That's when all the smiths, all the carpenters were taken. In 598 B.C., Nebuchadnezzar comes. And my brain is terrible. Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim. That's in verse 1. 598, he comes for the final time, and this is Zedekiah. So we are in the last king. And they're running to Egypt for help, which God told them, no. So it's rebelling against God, rebelling against God, rebelling against God, rebelling against God, and not trusting in God. America runs on we got the greatest military, we got the greatest people, we got the wonderful thing. Look at our technology. And this year we've had various attacks of ransomware. If God were somehow to interrupt the internet, interrupt the cell phones, even turn off the electricity, then our military has no strength at all. It's that simple. I built nuclear submarines, I can tell you, there's tons of electronics in those submarines. Being inside of a salt water system. Salt water is not good for a boat. Never mind electronics. America can get too proud and she is proud. God, God can do the simplest thing. Doesn't even have to lift a finger. That's where Judah is. Their last resort is, okay, have Egypt come. You mean the ones that were killing your male babies? The ones that you were serving with rigor? The ones you were so happy to get out of? Thus saith the Lord, the God of Israel. Thus shall ye say to the king of Judah, that sent you unto me to inquire of me. Behold, Pharaoh's army, which has come forth to help you, shall return to Egypt into their own land. <laughs> They're not going to help you. The Chaldeans shall come again, this will be the last time, and fight against this city, and take it. Boom. And burn it with fire. God said, that's it, I'm done. Calling in the enemies of God, the world, that Egypt's a type of the world, God says, that's it. I've had enough. Thus saith the Lord, deceive not yourself. You can deceive yourself. You know what the danger of many Christians today? They are deceiving themselves. They are thinking God is approved and God doesn't approve. How do you deceive yourself? Run to Revelation chapter 3 real quick. I'll show you deception in the Laodicean church age. Now this is deception. Revelation chapter 3 verse 14. 
unto the church of Laodiceans. That's us. Verse 17. Because thou sayest, I am rich, increased with goods, and have need of nothing. That's what the church is saying. Now here's what their deception, here's what God's saying. Knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. They deceive themselves. They are in the same condition that Judah is. Everything's hunky-dory. Everything's great. Our prophets are preaching other than what Jeremiah is preaching. So back to Jeremiah. Verse 9, deceive not yourselves, saying, now this is the deception. The Chaldeans shall surely depart from us. And they shall not depart. The Chaldeans have left. They're not coming back. They've already come back twice. And God has had Jeremiah preach. For thou ye, I mean, excuse me, for though ye has smitten the whole army of the Chaldeans that fight against you, and there remain but the wounded men among them. Yet, should they rise up every man in his tent and burn this city. You know God's saying? The wounded men are going to get you. Not the big mighty men, the wounded ones. Because God is the enemy of Judah now. And it came to pass that when the army of Chaldeans were broken up from Jerusalem for the fear of Pharaoh's army, so they left, that Jeremiah went forth out of Jerusalem to go in the land of Benjamin. That's where he's from, Antioch. To separate himself thence from the midst of the people. You know what Jeremiah said? I'm out of here. I'm done. When the preacher gets up, packs up, packs up, and starts heading out of town, you're in trouble. Jeremiah's had it. Jeremiah has faith in the Lord's word. I better get out of here. That Chaldean army's coming. And when he was at the gate of Benjamin, the captain of the ward was there. His name was Arja, the son of Shemaliah, the son of Hananiah. And he took Jeremiah the prophet, saying, Thou fallest away to the Chaldeans. And then said Jeremiah, It is false. I fall not away to the Chaldeans. Now the accusation, the false accusation, as they put before Jesus. You're, you're in cahoots with the Babylonian army. You're a spy for them. You've been preaching they're going to come and take us and, and we're going to be destroyed by them. So you must be one of their agents. No, he's a, he's a spokesman for God. So Arija took Jeremiah and brought him to the princes. And wherefore the princes were wroth with Jeremiah and smote him as they did with Jesus. As they did with Peter and John. And put him in prison in the house of John of the scribe, as they did with Peter and John. Now look at there's a scribe. That's a guy in charge of the scriptures, in charge of writing things, and he's got in his house a prison. For they had made that the prison. When Jeremiah was entered into the dungeon, into the cabins. And Jeremiah had remained there many days. Zedekiah the king sent and took him out. And the king asked him secretly in his house. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to see, he does not want to be seen with Jeremiah.
He kind of believes in Jeremiah, but I don't want the people to see it. Is there a word from the Lord? There's been plenty of words. What do we read? And in, 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 they're not listening. And Jeremiah said, I, I just picture a kind of attitude. There is. For said he, I don't know if I'm reading it correctly, but I read an attitude. Jeremiah is angry. Would you be angry? He's been in jail. And this king, this coward, brings him out of jail secrets. Is there any word from the Lord? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Go, go back up. Go back to verse 2. In the middle of verse 2. Neither he, nor his servants, nor the people of the land did hearken unto the words of the Lord. That's Zedekiah, verse 1. Come all the way down back to where we were. And he says, is there any word from the Lord? Yeah, he just, Jeremiah just smacked himself in the head. You ain't listening. There is. For said he, the Lord, Thou shalt be delivered in the hand of the king of Babylon. Period. Now, what is the anger of Jeremiah? He said, well, how do you know Jeremiah was angry? Moreover, Jeremiah said to King Zedekiah, What have I offended against thee? Do you see verse 37, 18, I mean, chapter 37, 18 in 2021? I'm offended what he said. They offended me. It's the same thing. What have I done to offend? There be, he, he preaches the gospel. Last week we had the police and everything again. Why? Uh, uh, he's sitting on the side while talking about God. And a cop walks up. He is doing perfectly right. And he shut up. And I said to the cop, I, I respect him. I said, you know, I said, you guys are busy. There's not enough police. You, you need more. And the thing I was saying is, listen, why are you here? There's other crimes being committed than a guy sitting on a sidewalk by the law of the, by the Supreme Court and the Constitution of the United States. You don't need to be here. And, and uh, pretty soon I'm going to raise up my voice. You need to start charging them for every time they call you guys here. Because you find no fault. And I know for a fact that if a burglar alarm system of a business is broken or whatever. And, you, and the police keep coming. The police keep coming. Because I work for a store like that. The police department will charge you for coming out for all the false alarms. How I got into that, I don't know. But Jeremiah is, what offense against thee, the king? Well, Zedekiah didn't put him in prison. Against thy servants, they put him in prison, the princes. Against his people, the, the Jews, that you have put me in prison. I'll tell you what the offense is. Preaching the word of God. That's why Christians won't go out and say, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved. Jesus Christ suffered and died according to Scripture, was buried and, and rose again the third day according. They won't say that. Because you'll be in trouble with the police. You'll go to jail and all that. And they'll say, Come to church. You come to church. Our pastor is such a great pastor. He'll find a great, lovely message. Come to church. That doesn't offend people. Where are now your prophets which prophesy on you, saying, The king of Babylon shall not come against you, nor against this land? Well, oh, look at Jeremiah rubbing it. I mean, he's taking a puppy and rubbing the puppy's nose in the doo-doo. 
Where are your prophets? They had been taken and killed. By the army, they said that wasn't coming. You know what Jeremiah did there? Now let me draw you a picture. I mean, this did not happen. But let me draw you a picture of what happened. Illustration, not literal. Jeremiah grabbed hold of Zedekiah, bent him over, and kicked him in the bridges. He gave Zedekiah a good, swift kick in the behind. Where are your prophets? Zedekiah is talking to a prophet of the Lord that has been right, that has been right, that has been right, that has been right. Where's your prophets that have been wrong, that have been wrong, that have been wrong? They're dead. Or they've been taken to Babylon. You see what Jeremiah is doing? He's taking the sword of the word of God. <laughs> oh, oh, Jeremiah. I, 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 this is one scene I really want to see when we get the glory. I don't know how God's going to read I really want, I want to see Jeremiah. And Jeremiah, there's nothing wrong with he's saying. He's saying the truth. They're not in prison. Oh, where are they now? They're in hell. We're coming up to chapter 39, three quarters of the way of Jeremiah. Therefore, hear now. He's ordering the king. <laughs> Listen to me. What we need today are men that are of the word. And if, you probably can't to the point with a, with a secret service. But we need men like Nathan to walk up to the President of the United States and say, You're a sinner. You're going to die. You're going to go to hell without the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, I've sent letters to the president, and they probably go through a secretary of a secretary. They probably don't reach the president's death. I don't know. I hope they do. This is the king. This is the man to say, put him back in prison and let him rot. And the princes and the people say, okay. They were here now, I pray thee, O my Lord the King. Let my supplications, I pray thee. Remember we just read earlier, Zedekiah sent people to, to Jeremiah. Will you pray for the people? Look at the words he did. I pray thee, I pray thee. Zedekiah is wounded. By the words of God. And Jeremiah is just sticking him more and more. You want me to pray for the people? You want me to pray for the people? I pray thee. I pray thee. How about me? Be accepted before thee. That thou cause me not to return to the house of Jonathan the scribe. Least I die there. Deplorable conditions. Then Zedekiah the king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah unto the court of the prison. Why not just let him go? He didn't do nothing wrong. You realize that they are, Jeremiah is finally doing what they want him to do. Get out of town and don't come back. You know, I don't know what the Lord is going to do with me. I have no idea. But let's say for let's say the Lord comes and says, listen, I want you to move to Minnesota. Too cold. You're going to pack up your ministry, you're moving. On such and such day, here I mean like he did with me in Florida. Here's the money, you're going. And I get up Saturday at the farmer's market and say, and come on, this is the final day. The Lord's having me move. 
I will not be here, Lord willing, no more on Saturday mornings to preach to the gospel. This is the last day. Let's let me. You know, they would get up and they would stand up and applaud me. And they would be too happy to drive the U-Haul truck out of Florida for me. When we left Norwich, I, I, I told you, we're leaving, we're going to Florida. A couple more months, we're going to Florida. If they would just let Jeremiah go. But God's not finished with Jeremiah. And God's got to put Jeremiah in prison so he can use Jeremiah. And I'm telling you, I've been six to eight years in prison ministry. And one of my messages or one of the things I would stress at times would be, God has put you in this prison with three walls and a door that you can't control. Because this is the only way he's going to get your attention. And I've had many men after the message or I've come back and many men come and say, you know, you are 100% correct. I had one man tell me one time, he said, you know, he says, I wanted to go to the to the weight room or something like that or go play basketball. And the guards came in and said, no, we can't let you guys out. Uh, he says, I, I got, uh, uh, uh. I said, no, and he goes, you know what? He goes, I didn't read my Bible today. And he said, I laid down in my bunk and I just read my Bible. He says, I, he says, I read pages. Of the Bible. I would not have read if I had the ability to go get the basketball or the weight room. I've had men tell me they would probably be dead if they were not in the prison cell. And that, yes, putting them in prison was God's mercy for their life. Because we're not done with Jeremiah yet. I said, listen, when we get to chapter 39, I think it is. 13 times, yeah, 39. 39, chapter 39 is only three quarters. We still got another quarter of Jeremiah to go after a couple more chapters. I think if, if, if Jeremiah would have been let go by King Zedekiah... What was that? That was Jeremiah running as quick as he could out of town. And God like, Jeremiah, I want you... Uh-uh-uh. Because Jeremiah, number one, believes what God said. And God has told him. It's it. Done. They're coming. This is the third time it will happen. And Jeremiah's like, I don't want to be around here. He's been slapped. He's been jailed. He's been rejected. Cussed at, however they cuss in the Jewish language. Then, that's his name, Zedekiah. The king commanded that they should commit Jeremiah to the court of the prison. So there was another prison. That they should give him a daily piece of bread out of Baker Street. And that's not the Baker Street of Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes does not live on that street. But that would tell you. What was his street in Jerusalem? Where the bakers live. The bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You know the biggest debate that Jesus got in his entire ministry? That thing with the bread, John chapter 6. That the Catholics had thrown out totally out the window. Oh, we got to literally eat the body and blood of Jesus. John chapter 6, I am the bread of life. That is the point, with, you know, I had one pastor of a church. You know, we don't want to be a church split. We are not a church split. There was a church split at John 6, 66. Some of his disciples left. 
He turned to be, are you going to leave also? I'm not quoting it correctly. Jeremiah is now going to see the bread of life. Because you know why Jeremiah is in prison now? When the army comes, he's going to be spared his life. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the end of the story now. The Babylonian army, I forget what his name is, almost like Nebuchadnezzar. Outside. One of them, almost like that. He's going to come in and open up the prison doors. Hi, Jeremiah. Well, how are you doing? You know everything that the Lord told you to say? Well, yeah. It's happened. This is, this, my army has done all this to Jerusalem because you guys went against your God. The guy preaches to Jeremiah what Jeremiah has been preaching. And he tells Jeremiah, well, if you want to stay here, stay here. Go get some food. If you want to come with me back to Babylon, I'll, I'll take care of you. I'll put you on one of my feet. We'll go to Babylon. And then he pays Jeremiah. That's coming up. Until all the bread in the city were spent. And Jeremiah remained in the court of the prison. What a way to close a chapter. But it doesn't close the life of Jeremiah. It ain't done yet. We are in the point in the world today, pastors are being locked up. I have heard the reports that in Canada, churches are being burned. In America, churches have been locked. I think we will go under persecution. I, even I, have been threatened to go to jail by preaching the gospel. My lawyer telling me, <laughs> it's up to you, and if, 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 if they put you in jail, call me, I'll take care of it. I'm telling you right now, Maybe I should get off it. But I, I preach what I know. The last church I was in, if there's anything that pastor, he would want to get rid of me. If he could get rid of me so his people can't hear the truth. With his alleged lies. You get all these churches' religions together. Like the Antichrist wants them. That one bad apple. That man that preaches on the street. Those men that preach on the street. They go against what we teach. We got to get rid of them. They're doing it to me in Daytona Beach. You can listen to my video. You can listen to me. All I preach is the gospel. Heaven and hell. I don't point fingers. That's all Jeremiah is doing. I don't know what the Lord's going to have for the rest of the Laodicean church age. But Jeremiah is a close call. 